Hi guys, Ree here. Welcome back to another episode of Real Talk with Ree. Thank you so much for tuning in. We're doing something a little bit different today on the podcast, but something I think I'm going to do a little bit more of moving forward, and that is responding with an entire episode to one of the comments from one of my videos. So if you have any questions for me, any uh, things you want answered, responded to, topics, that kind of thing, do leave me a little comment down in one of the videos, down on this video if you're watching on YouTube or if you're watching on, if you're actually listening, sorry, on the podcast, just in a normal traditional podcast audio only manner, then head over to the Real Talk With Re YouTube channel, leave me a comment on any one of the videos about something you would like me to talk about in a future episode and we can do that which I think is kind of the beauty of the podcast over like my main YouTube channel it's something we can have a really good chat about things in depth okay so I'm going to start by reading you the comment um, and then I think we'll have a little chat about I think there's quite a lot to unpick anyway so it's from Esma Lee at E-S-M-A-L-E-I. So thanks for leaving this comment. First of all, I'd like to say I love your videos. I can tell you're such a dedicated parent and overall lovely individual. Thank you very much. That's very sweet. However, as someone on the spectrum, I would like to add, not directed at, necess- uh, not to that, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> words in a tangle, not directed to you necessarily, but anyone who might be reading because I have been reading the comments on videos on autism, etc., and noticed a trend. So I do acknowledge that she's not necessarily, that there's no malice here. There's no attacking. This is just um, something that she'd kind of like to say, which is that parents with children on the spectrum tend to talk about and really emphasize how challenging it is for them as parents to have a child who is not neurotypical. And whilst I completely understand, I also know that it's likely not to be meant um, but to be viewed negatively. It just makes it seem like we're so much more difficult compared to normal, in inverted commas, children that I, and I'm sure other people with autism can relate, could have saved their parents so much trouble if I was simply born normal, which was just really, really heartbreaking to me. Anyway, we'll carry on. In short, it makes it seem like we're burdens. Once again, I do get it where they're coming from, but I think the way we talk about children should change. It is true we might have some peculiarities, uh, but once you truly understand your child and know what works for them and what doesn't, I don't believe necessarily we're much more difficult. Because every child is different whether they're on the spectrum or not. I don't believe that I was any worse than my neurotypical siblings, for example. I really don't want this to come across as hate or negativity because it's truly not my intention. Please feel free to respond honestly, which is what I'm doing in this episode. Um, So, first of all... um, I don't take, you know, that was very beautifully put together and I I don't take, um, I do not feel attacked in any way. That was very well thought out and very nicely put. Um, And just an interesting point to jump off as a a topic of conversation. So, yes, uh, there is a lot, um, perhaps if you read the comment sections of videos, of very desperate parents perhaps looking for solutions, people that feel they're very much at their end of their tether and... I can understand as a person on the spectrum reading that it it might be very, very challenging to do. And I would just take this um, this opportunity to urge everyone to think before they write things, um, just with a view of who might be reading it. Uh, and I know not everyone does this. And also um, from a point of view that someone does put things out on the internet, um, this is something I have to take into account. But I think we also have to take this into account with what we read on the internet, even if it's not necessarily about us, but how it impacts our our emotions. And I think you've just got to realise that some people writing things on the internet may not be thinking about the person reading them and how those words may impact them. So some people may be trolls, for example. Some people may just be really struggling and venting in that moment. So if you are reading comment sections and things and you find them triggering about anything, not just autism or whatever, please... Um, step back from that and protect your own mental health first which um, ideally people should just be very considerate of what they say before things are said so uh, I don't know exactly which comments that this particular um, viewer has read that she's found difficult but I think it's just the general feel about the struggle and I think parents who write those comments never think that their own children will see them because the chances are they probably won't it's very unlikely your child, especially if you're not a YouTuber, is going to see something you have commented on YouTube. It's very unlikely. However, other people on the spectrum might. So just sort of, it is worth for all of us to keep that in mind. Um, Now, I am very aware, because obviously I talk about autism online. Um, Why do I do that? 
Um, I do that because a few reasons, really. First of all, I'm sharing the information that I wish, I say younger me, but me just a few steps back had. Me, just as we're on that journey for a diagnosis, me when I was just coming to terms with things, me when I was just struggling and fighting. And the fighting, I would say for me, is less about a struggle with my children and more like struggles to get help for my children, to get what they need. And that I found has been the biggest struggle in this whole thing. And the whole, is it all in my head? Am I that whole back and forth and things? So I, first of all, share that online because I hope to help someone that was in my position a few, you know, a few steps back. And if that helps anybody at all, and I I know it has helped some of you because you've been kind enough to message me, comment, DM, email, all those things. So I know that, I don't know how many people it's helped, but I know it's really helped some people and that means a lot. So I feel that that has value because in helping those parents Um, you know, I've had people say thanks so much for the videos, um, and specifically videos on my main channel because the podcast is still pretty new, but, um, parents who have watched videos about signs and symptoms and things of autism might be an interesting one to do in an upcoming podcast. Actually, let me know if you want me to do that one about, um, signs, symptoms and things, um, that may or may not be to do with autism. So I've had so many lovely comments and DMs and in these emails, parents saying things like, because of a video I saw on your channel, I then did pursue a diagnosis and now we have that diagnosis and because of that, the child has got extra support and because of that, I now understand my child better and because of that, our lives are easier. And that in itself, I feel, has massive value. But the second element of the reason I talk about it online is in a way for my children because I think the level of understanding, and this is just coming from personal experience, of autism, hopefully the levels of understanding are going up and hopefully everyone is understanding more. That is my hope. And I want to be a part of that conversation because when, uh, before any of my children were diagnosed, what I thought autism was is not in fact what autism is for everybody. So I knew one, I knew of one person um, with autism who was completely nonverbal, um, needed around the clock care, um, had a one-to-one and then eventually ended up living in a residential facility. And I know that um, that is true for some people with autism. It is true for that person with autism. But that's what I thought autism was before I was introduced to it myself through our own journey. And if more people can understand that actually um, it's, it's, so, it's so different for so many people and what autism is, is different for each person. And really... And this is what we're going to come back to. We're going to come back to this question and this comment. The way I explain autism to my children is some people struggle with maths. You don't. Some people struggle with reading. You don't. And it doesn't mean all people with autism don't struggle with those things, but my children don't. Some people don't struggle with queuing. You do. Some people don't struggle if their routine changes, whereas maybe you do. Every human has their own struggles. All people have their own struggles. Autism is just what your particular collection of struggles is called. So if someone really struggles with reading, that might be dyslexia. If someone really, really struggles with um, maths, is it dyscalculus? Discal- is that the word? Is that the word? I'm not sure. I'm not familiar with that one. But there, you know, where maths gets all jumbly, there is a term for that. Some people are just painfully shy. Painfully shy. There's no actual like diagnosis or... And therefore, there's no pathway or label or help with that. But some people, that's their struggle. Some people just are really um, struggle with their trains of thought. Maybe that that can be um, part of ADHD. But everyone struggles with something. Like, you show me a human in this world that... Because I would love to meet that person who doesn't struggle with anything at all. Who has no self-doubt. Who has perfect body image. Who just sails through everything and everything that they turn their hand to they can do because we're human and everyone is going to struggle with something so parenting in general parenting any child is going to throw you up some challenges by your child having a diagnosis of say autism it's just giving you a little heads up at what those challenges might be if you have a neurotypical child sorry to break it to you you're not going to be free of challenges really sorry sorry it's unlikely it could be A very bumpy road, a slightly bumpy road, or a very hilly road. But you don't know. (laughs) You don't know exactly what those challenges are going to be. An autism diagnosis just means that, okay, 
the challenges your particular child is going to face are likely to be X, Y, and Z. And in a way, it could be argued then that because you've got that information and because you have managed to put strategies in place and you've managed to understand your child's needs, they may actually have an easier time in some ways than, for example, a neurotypical child that is painfully shy, that hasn't had strategies and support and things with that. So I honestly believe that getting a diagnosis is not a negative thing or a bad thing. It's just, it's like doing those personality quizzes of are you a better learner via reading or listening to things or watching things? And by understanding that, by unlocking and being told this is how your brain functions, you can put things in place in your life. So if you do one of those learning quizzes, I can't remember what they're called, but and you find out that you learn best by listening to things, and then you're revising for an exam and you listen to it all on audiobook, and that so much more of that information is going to go into your brain compared to if you're reading it because you're the type of learner that responds to things that you're listening to. And I just feel that all parenting is a struggle and um, every parent is going to struggle with something with their children. We don't know exactly what those struggles are going to be. Even with children with autism, you don't know exactly what they're going to be. But the diagnosis just highlights, and especially when you get a breakdown of what the specific struggles are, because an autism diagnosis isn't like... Um, it's not like super cut and dry. It's not like having, um, it's like when you have an eye test and they give you an exact number of how, how blind you are. <laughs> that's not the right, that's not the correct term, is it? It's not the correct term. How short-sighted you are or how long-sighted you are. And there are specific numbers associated with that. Um, and it's a very precise, um, like a numeric factor. An autism diagnosis, although they do add things up with numbers, is more like, it's going to highlight specific challenges. So it's more, um, more like a wordy thing, if that makes sense. And they're going to give you specific um, challenges that your child has. And then you think, okay, well, that's not a bad thing. That's just highlighting what I know your, my child needs help with. So in a way, it can be such a positive thing. Um, I actually um, spoke to my child's, um, uh, one of the members of staff of my child's school, and they were talking about there's a high percentage of children with additional learning needs at the moment in the school. And I said, do you know what? That is, in fact, a positive thing because all of that, all that means is that your staff have been so good at picking those things up. That just means that those are the children that have actually been identified. And that's actually a credit to the school because don't tell me that years ago, like when I was in school, there were fewer children with additional learning needs because statistically there were fewer children with additional learning needs. There were just fewer children identified as having additional learning needs. Does that make sense? So while... I can see that um, I'm sure there are, you know, comment sections and forums and things of very um, fraught parents dealing with challenges and they're, they're venting and comments of autism videos or autism forums or whatever it might be and talking about the challenges they face. And some of them I'm sure are talking about the challenges they face with their specific child. For me, what I tend to focus on when I'm talking online, because I never talk specifically about um, a specific meltdown a specific, specific child has had with me because I don't think that's fair. I don't, um, I think I did talk initially about general difficulties when the children had um, their diagnosis. Like when I've had a challenging day and you see me on my stories over on my main, my main, my four, you don't hear me say, oh, this child did this. It's like, I just, I'm like, I've had a challenging day. If you have to, high five, I salute you. Um, I don't share specifics about what the individual children are struggling with now because I don't think that's fair to them and I know every time I pick up the microphone the camera I'm very aware that at some point I might be talking to my child because it's very unlikely that they're going to want to watch this now they could um which is why I always keep everything appropriate shall we say if one of them was to stumble across one of my videos I wouldn't want to spoil what they have for their birthday or whatever by, the, by them actually accidentally seeing so whenever and people are like share what they're having for Christmas birthday I'm like I can't my kids might see it, not taking that risk. But I'm also very, I'm more aware that I might be talking to one of my children as an adult that go back and watch one of these videos. And baby, if I am talking to future you from past mummy, I probably look older than I do now in this video <laughs> at this, the time you're watching this. Um, but I'm very aware that I might be talking to one of my children in the future. And I'm going to get emotional now. Um, I don't want to ever say anything that's going to hurt them or upset them because 
I absolutely adore and love my children, as I'm sure you can you can tell, and I'm sure most of you do. Um, wasn't expecting to get emotional. Don't have to use your hand. That's not good. Um, I'm just very aware that they might watch whatever I put out into the universe, and I hope that what I'm saying is well phrased and well meaning, and comes from a place of love, and never is comes across the wrong way or offends or hurts them, because my children are all amazing human beings. And while they all come with a unique set of challenges, that would have been the same whether they were neurodiverse or neurotypical. All children are challenging. And just because parents find parenting challenging doesn't mean they don't love their kids. Just because there are elements of raising your child that are, you're going to find difficult does not mean you don't love your kids. It just means that this is hard. There is so much expected of us as parents. And there's so much information now for us to absorb, which is great, but also really overwhelming at the same time. And I hope that if they're watching this in the future, that they know this is coming from a place of love from my best intentions um, and that I have managed to say things in a way that makes sense and that is helpful to people with raising awareness, with supporting other parents without ever being anything other than positive towards my own children. That is my hope. So I am very conscious of, I mean, every time I say anything online, <laughs> I'm always like, oh, I hope everyone takes that the right way. Ooh. I'm really, I'm, I'm actually a massive people pleaser at heart and I'm really worried about offending people. Um, but equally, I know that when you put things online, there's always going to be someone that dislikes what you say every time. So where am I trying to get to with this? I'm trying to respond to this comment and just the going back to the bit about I compared to normal neurotypical children, she's, she's put normal in, in inverted commas in this comment. Um, I hope that anyone listening to this that is on the spectrum um, or my children or whoever never feel like a burden because no child is a burden. Every child comes with their own challenges, every single child. Maybe like my children didn't have colic and scream for for weeks on end. Some people's babies did. And that's a massive challenge for the mother and the child or the parent and the child. Um, we don't have to deal with that, you know. So um, that is a challenge that some new parents of newborns would have to face. And that must be so, so hard and so awful not being able to comfort your child and just feeling so dreadful and seeing your child in pain in effect. Um, so that was a challenge we didn't have to face. But I'm sure lots of neurotypical um, children had provided, you know, presented that challenge at the time they, when they were small. Um, so, yeah, it's not about being on the spectrum, not on the spectrum, difficult, not difficult. All children are wonderful, but all children are challenging because parenting's challenging because it's not supposed to be easy. You are literally, you get given a baby that mostly that comes out of you or sometimes you adopt them. And then you have to pick a name for this child. You have to pick a name and then like one day I remember asking my children, do you like your names? And they're like, uh, yeah, mum, why, why are you asking? It's like, because I had to pick them for you. You didn't get a say in it. I had to pick it and that got to be your name. That's quite a big responsibility. And then you've got to make choices for your children about which techniques you're going to use and which style of parenting and where you're going to live and and which choices you're going to make about how much you work and how much you're at home and which school you send them to and what they're going to be allowed to do and what they're not going to be allowed to do and there's so many choices parenting's really really hard it's totally worth it and I wouldn't change a tiny bit of it not any of it but it's all it's all challenging um so if you are um reading comments on a video about autism and there are parents complaining about their particular challenges know that if you looked in other places there would be other parents complaining about their specific challenges about children like I'm sure if you um you watch a video about I don't know any other topic food intolerances and then you get parents really really worried about you know not being able to get the right help or trying the right food or not being able to get the right diagnosis and all that kind of thing and there'd be that challenge there or parents of of children just dis with behavioral difficulties or with dyslexia or just generally parents. In fact, just <laughs> generally parents online. This is why I, I really love like the relatable comedy about parents, you know, and I always share a lot of like my favorite ones over on my Mummy of Four Instagram because parenting's tough and those pa those um, those amazing uh, accounts that manage to share the, the funny side of it uh, because all parenting so challenging just I love it a bit of relatable comedy guys I just I do love it I do love it because um it just reminds us that 
it's all a bit of a challenge. So I hope that that has come across in the correct way and hasn't sounded too negative because it's not supposed to sound negative at all. It's like, I mean, I've just gone on about how challenging parenting is, but I think I was just trying to highlight the point that it's not parenting children with autism that's challenging. It's just, that's what parenting is. And those specific struggles. I'm not sure if that has made sense. I'd, I would love it actually if you could comment below um, and just kind of let me know if if that has made any sense or I've just rambled and rambled uh, and not really got anywhere. Um, and let me know if you want me to do more of this, more of this kind of episode where I'm responding to things. I'd love it if you would. And in fact, if you um, could be really like helpful to me when I'm looking for questions. If you just type question at the beginning in capital letters, question, and then I'll be able to find those really, really easily when I'm looking through my, like the back end of my YouTube to look for questions I need to answer. So maybe we'll do, if they're shorter questions, little like ask me anything kind of podcast episodes, um, or if it's a bit, uh, meteor like this, and I feel like it requires some more chit chat, then we will, we'll chat about, um, more of these things in depth in the future so you've been listening to Ree from Real Talk with Ree don't forget to like subscribe do all those YouTube things if you're on YouTube rate and review and follow or something if you're on your podcasty stuff um, I appreciate you all thank you so much and I shall see you next week bye